Paul, an ambassador belonging to Christ Jesus through the desire of God, and Timothy our brother to the local assembly of God, the one which is in Corinth, together with the saints, all of them, who are in the whole of Achaia. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Eulogized be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassionate mercies, and a God of every consolation and encouragement, who consoles and encourages us in our every affliction and tribulation, in order that we may be able to console and encourage those who are in any affliction or tribulation by means of the consolation and encouragement with which we ourselves are being consoled and encouraged by God. Because even as the sufferings of Christ for righteousness' sake, endured in the opposition of sinners to his ministry on earth. Because even as the sufferings of Christ overflow to us, thus our consolation and encouragement given to others overflow through Christ. And if we are being hard-pressed by reason of affliction, it is for the sake of your consolation, encouragement, deliverance, and preservation. If we are being consoled, and encouraged, it is for the sake of your consolation and encouragement, which consolation and encouragement are operative in the patient enduring of the same sufferings which we also are suffering. And our hope for you is unshaken and constant, knowing that as you are joint participants of the sufferings, thus also you shall be of the consolation and encouragement. For we do not desire you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning our affliction which came to us in Asia, that we were weighed down beyond our power so that we despaired even of living. But we ourselves have had the answer of death in ourselves, and at this time still have that experience, in order that we should not be trusting in ourselves but in the God who raises the dead who delivered us out of so great a death, and will deliver us, on whom we have placed our hope, and right now still maintain that attitude of hope, that also he will yet deliver us. You also, helping together on our behalf by your supplication, in order that thank thanksgiving may be given for the gracious mercy shown to us by reason of the many who prayed for us. For our glorying is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in the holiness, purity, and unsullied character of God, not in human wisdom, but by God's grace we ordered our behavior in the world. And this was more abundantly evident to you. For no other things are we writing to you but those things which you are reading or even acknowledge to be what they really are and which I hope you will acknowledge to the end, as also certain ones of you acknowledged us for what we really are, that we are even as that in which you glory, and you are that in which we glory in the day of our Lord Jesus. And having become fully persuaded of this, I, after mature consideration, desired to come to you first, in order that you may be having a second bestowment of grace by reason of my second visit to you, and to go through you, your city, into Macedonia, and again from Macedonia to come to you and be sent on my way to Judea with the travel requisites from the journey. Therefore, having this desire under these circumstances, I did not exhibit fickleness of mind, did I? Or, the things which I propose, do I, <laughs> or the, the things which I purpose, do I purpose them in a merely human capacity, that there should be with me the yes, yes, today, and the no, no, tomorrow? But as God is faithful, our word to you is not a yes and a no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who among you was proclaimed by us, through me and Silvanus and Timothy, did not become yes and no, 
but in him yes has become yes and remains so. For as many promises as are promises of God have become in him yes and are a yes at present. Wherefore, also through him is the amen to the glory of God through us. Now, he who is constantly confirming us more firmly in our position in and union with Christ, in conforming us to his likeness, and who anointed us is God, who also placed his seal upon us and gave us the token payment guaranteeing the payment in full of our salvation, which token payment is the Spirit in our hearts. Moreover, as for myself, I call God as a witness against my soul, if I am speaking falsely, that to spare you. I did not come as yet to Corinth, not that we have lordship over your faith, but that we are co-workers in producing your joy, for by faith you stand. But I decided this in my own interest and for my own sake, not to come to you, not to come again to you in grief. For as for myself, if, as is the case, I cause you grief, who then is he who makes me joyful except the one who was made to grieve by me? And I wrote this very thing, lest, when I came, I should have grief from those whom it was a necessity in the nature of the case to be making to rejoice, having confidence in you all that my joy is the joy of all of you. For out of a source of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote to you through my, through my tears, not in order that you may be made to grieve, but in order that you may come to know experientially the sacrificial love which I have so abundantly for you. Now, if, as is the case, anyone has caused grief, he has not grieved me, but to some extent he has caused grief to you all, in order that I may not be exerting too much pressure upon you all. Sufficient to such a one is this punish punishment which was inflicted by the majority, so that on the contrary you should rather graciously grant forgiveness and encouragement and strength strengthen him, lest, possibly, such a person may be swallowed up with his excessive grief. Wherefore, I beg of you, please, that you confirm publicly and solemnly by a judicial decision your love for him. For with this end in view, I wrote in order that I may come to know by experience your approved character. This approval based upon the fact that you met the specifications laid down. Whether you are those who are obedient in all things. Now, to whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For also that which I myself have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, for your sakes I have forgiven it in the presence of Christ. In order that no advantage may be gained over us by Satan. For we are not ignorant of, this purp of his purposes. Now, having come to Troas for the purpose of preaching the good news of the Christ, and a door having been opened for me by the Lord. I have had no relaxation in my spirit, because I did not find Titus, my brother. But having bidden them farewell, I went off to Macedonia. Now, thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in the Christ, and makes known the aroma of the experiential knowledge of himself through us in every place. Because a fragrance of Christ we are to God, among those who are being saved, and among those who are perishing. To the one, an odor proceeding from death resulting in death, and to the other, an aroma proceeding from life resulting in life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as the many who are adulterating the word of God, but as of an unadulterated, unsullied purity of character, but as from God we are speaking in the sight of God in Christ. Are we beginning again to be commending ourselves? Or we do not need, as some, 
commendatory letters to you or commendatory letters from you, do we? As for you, you are our letter, which has been permanently engraved in our hearts and which is being known and read by all men. You are those who are openly shown to be a letter which exhibits Christ, this letter having been ministered, written by us, not having been written with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on stone tablets, but on tablets that are human hearts. And such confidence are we having through the Christ towards God, not that we are sufficient in ourselves to evaluate anything, this evaluation originating from ourselves, but our sufficiency has its source in God, who also made us sufficient as those who minister a testament. New in quality, not of the letter of the law, but of the Spirit. For the letter of the law kills, but the Spirit makes alive. Now, since the ministrator, since the ministration of death, which has been engraved by means of letters on stones, was surrounded with glory, so that the sons of Israel were not able to fix their gaze upon the face of Moses because of the glory of his face, which glory was of a transient nature. How shall not rather the ministration of the Spirit be surrounded with glory? For in view of the fact that the ministration of condemnation was glorious, by so much more will the ministration of righteousness superabound in the sphere of the glorious. For even that which has been made glorious, the ministration of death, has not really been made glorious in this respect, namely, on account of the glory of the ministration of righteousness, which glory superabounds. For, since that which is passing away was with glory, by so much more that which remains is within the sphere of glory. Having therefore such a hope, we use great freedom and boldness of speech, and not even as Moses put a covering over his face to the end, that the sons of Israel should not fix their gaze upon the termination of that which is passing away. But their minds were hardened, for to this very day the same covering remains at the reading of the testament whose usefulness is over it not being revealed by that excuse me it not being revealed that it the covering is being done away in Christ but even today whenever Moses is being read a covering lies upon their heart however when it Israel shall turn to the Lord the covering is being taken away by the one who turns to the Lord but the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty now, as for us, we all, with uncovered face, reflecting as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are having our outward expressions changed into the same image from one degree of glory to another, according as this change of expression proceeds from the Lord. The Spirit, excuse me, <laughs> I got the hiccups. <laughs> I got the hiccups in Second Corinthians, it's hard to read. Oh, sorry. Now, as for us, we all, with uncovered face, reflecting as in a mirror the, gl the glory of the Lord, are having our outward expressions changed into the same image from one degree of glory to another, according as this change of expression proceeds from the Lord, the Spirit, this outward expression coming from and being truly rep representative of our Lord. Because of this, having this ministry, of the New Testament, even as we were made the objects of mercy in its bestowal, we do not lose courage, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not ordering the manner of our lives in the sphere of craftiness, nor even adulterating the word of God by an admixture of error, but by means of an open declaration of the truth, commending ourselves to every variety of the conscience of men in the sight of God. But, if also, as is the case, our gospel has been covered, in the case of those who are perishing it has been covered, in whom the God of this age blinded the minds of the unbelievers to the end, that the light of the good news of the glory of the Christ, who is the derived image of God, should not dawn upon them. 
for we do not proclaim ourselves but Christ Jesus as Lord. But we proclaim ourselves as your slaves for the sake of Jesus, because the God who said, Out of darkness light shall shine, shined in our hearts, resulting in an illumination being given of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure, the reflection of the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ, in earthenware containers, in order that the super excellent of the power might be from God as a source and not from us. We are being hard pressed from every side, but we are not hemmed in. We are, we are bewildered, not knowing which way to turn, but not utterly destitute of possible measures or resources. We are being persecuted, but not left in the lurch, not abandoned, not let down. We are being knocked down, but not destroyed, always bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus in order that the life of Jesus might be clearly and openly shown in our body. For, as for us, we who are living are perpetually being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake, in order that the life of Jesus might be clearly and openly shown in our mortal body, so that death is operative in us, but the life is operative in you. But we have the same spirit of faith as the psalmist, according as it has been written and is at present on record. I believed, wherefore I spoke. And as for us, we are believing, wherefore also we are speaking, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus shall also raise us with Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sake, in order that the grace, having been multiplied through the intermediate agency of the many in their prayers for me, may cause the thanksgiving to superabound, resulting in the glory of God. Wherefore, we are not losing courage, but if, as is the case, our outward self is progressively decaying, Yet our inward self is being changed in, into a new kind of life, fit for the new spiritual existence into which we have been ushered in salvation, and constantly being conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus day by day. For our momentary light burden of affliction is working out for us more and more surpassingly an eternal heavy weight of glory, while we are not contemplating the things that are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. For we know that if our house of this present tent life on earth be taken down, a building from God we have, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For indeed, in this tent we are groaning longing to be clothed in addition with our house which is from heaven, seeing that also, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked, a disembodied spirit. For, indeed, we being in this tent are groaning, being weighed down, because we do not desire to be unclothed, divested of our mortal body, but clothed upon, invested with our heavenly body, in order that which is mortal, may be swallowed up by the life. Now, he who by his working in us made us fit for this very thing, the change from mortality to life, is God. He who gave us the Spirit as a token payment in kind, guaranteeing to us the rest of our salvation, being therefore always confident, and knowing that while we are in our natural home, for this earthly existence in our body, we are living abroad, absent from that home in heaven, the Lord. For through faith we are ordering our manner of life, not by something seen. Now, we are of good courage and well pleased rather to be away from our body as our home, and at home face to face with the Lord. Wherefore, we make it our aim whether at home or living abroad, to be well-pleasing to Him. 
for it is necessary in the nature of the case for all of us to be openly shown as to our true character before the judgment seat of Christ, in order that each one may receive a recompense with respect to the things which we which were practiced through the agency of our body, whether they were good or bad. Knowing therefore the fear of the Lord, we are persuading men of our sincerity and integrity, but to God we have been openly shown as to our character, and I am hoping that we have been openly shown to be what we are in your conscience. Consciences. We are not again commending ourselves to you, but are writing these things as giving you a base of operations from which to glory about us, in order that you may be having this matter of glorying with which to answer those who are glorying in outward appearances and not in the heart, the inner man. For, whether we are out of our mind, it was with respect to God. Whether we are of sober mind, it is with respect to you. For the love which Christ has for me presses on me from all sides, holding me to one end and prohibiting me from considering any other, wrapping itself around me in tenderness, giving me an impelling motive, having brought me to this conclusion, namely, that one died on behalf of all, therefore all died, and that he also died on behalf of all in order that those who are living no longer are living for themselves, but for the one who died on their behalf and instead of them, and was raised up. So that, as for us, from this particular time onward, not even one individual do we know as judged upon the basis of human standards, even though we, Paul, in his unsaved state, have known Christ as judged by human standards, yet now no longer do we know him as such. So that, assuming that anyone is in Christ, he is a creation new in quality, the anti antiquated, out-of-date things, which do not belong to the new life in Christ Jesus, have passed away. Behold, all things have become new in quality. But the aforementioned all things are from God as a source the one who reconciled us to himself through the intermediate agency of Christ and gave to us the ministry whose work is that of proclaiming the message of this reconciliation, namely, that absolute deity in Christ was reconciling the world of sinners to himself, not putting down on the liability side of their ledger their trespasses, and lodged in us the story of the reconciliation. Therefore, on behalf of Christ and in his place, we are acting as ambassadors. As through God, we're saying, I beg of you, please, through us as his intermediate agents, we beg you in Christ's stead, be reconciled at once to God. He who did not know sin in an experiential way, on behalf of us and instead of us, was made the representative of sin, in order that, as for us, we might become a righteousness of God in him. Moreover also, we, working together with God, beg you not to receive the grace of God without any salutary, salutary results. For he says, in an epochal, strategic season, propitious in character, I, I hearken to you, and in a day of salvation I ran to your cry and brought you aid. Behold, now is a pro propitious epochal season. Behold, now is a day of salvation. We are giving no occasion of stumbling to anyone in order that our ministering services may not be found with blot or blemish, and thus be censored, but in all things recommending ourselves as God's ministering servants should do in much patience under trials, bearing up and not losing heart or courage, in afflictions, in calamity and straits, in distressing situations, in stripes inflicted by a beating with rods, in imprisonments, in the midst of political instability, 
in labors to the point of exhaustion, in sleeplessness at night, in hunger, in pureness, in knowledge, in long suffering, patience under ill treatment, in kindness marked by gentleness and gracious, in the Holy Spirit, in a love devoid of hypocrisy, in the word of truth, in God's power, by means of the weapons of the righteousness, offensive weapons on the right hand and defensive weapons on the left, by glory and dishonor, by slanderous report and good report, as those who are disseminating deceit and yet true, as being a non-entity, obscure, without proper credentials and yet fully recognized, as dying and behold we are living, as chastened yet not put to death, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many wealthy, as having not even one thing yet possessing all things. Our mouth stands open to you. We speak freely to you. We keep nothing back. O Corinthians, our heart is broadened and enlarged, widened in its sympathy towards you. You are not compressed nor narrowed down in us. You have ample space in our heart. We hold you within a great love, but you are compressed and narrowed down in your affections. You have tightened up in your affection for me. Now, as a returning kind from my affections towards you, as to children I am speaking to you, you also be enlarged. Make a large place in your heart for me. Stop being joined as with a yoke to unbelievers in a common state or endeavor which, which latter are of a character different from and diametrically opposed to the state of a child of God and any endeavor in which he may properly engage. For what partnership does righteousness have with lawlessness? Or what does light have in common with darkness? And what harmony does Christ have with Belial? Or what part does a believer have with an unbeliever? And what agreement does the inner sanctuary of God have with idols? For, as for us, we are an inner sanctuary of the living God. Even as God said, I dwell in them, in fellowship with them, as in a home, and I will live my life in and through them, and I will be their God, and they themselves will be my people. Wherefore, come out at once from their midst, and separate yourselves at once, says the Lord, and stop touching that which is unclean. And as for myself, I will receive you kindly, and treat you with favor, and I will be to you a father. And as for you, you will be to me sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Having therefore these promises, beloved ones, let us cleanse ourselves from all contamination which may defile the flesh, the human body, and the human spirit, progressively accomplishing holiness in the fear of the Lord. Make room in your hearts for us. We wronged no man. We corrupted no man. We took advantage of no man for the sake of gain. I'm not saying this in the spirit of con condemnation, for I have said before that you are in our hearts to die together and to live together. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying on, on your behalf. I have been completely filled with the encouragement. I am being caused to superabound with joy in all, in all our tribulation. For even after we came into Macedonia, our frail humanity experienced no relaxing from the oppression and tension of tribulation. But I was having pressure brought to bear upon me from every side, on the outside, contentions with adversaries, within, fears. Nevertheless, he who encourages those who are downcast, encouraged us, our God, in the coming and personal presence of Titus, and not only in his coming and personal presence, but also by the encouragement with which he was encouraged over you, bringing back tidings to us from your longing to see me, your mourning at the rebuke I sent you, your zeal on my behalf, so that I rejoiced yet more. For though I caused you grief by my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it. For I see that letter caused you grief. 
though but for a season. I am now rejoicing, not because you were made to grieve, but because you were made to grieve resulting in your repentance. For you were made to grieve in accordance with the will of God, in order that in not even one thing would you sustain injury or damage by reason of us. For the grief which is according to the will of God achieves a repentance which leads to salvation, of repentance which has no regret. But the grief which is exercised by the world in its outworking results in death. For, look, this very same thing, this being made to grieve in accordance with God's will, to what extent it produced earnestness in you, yes, verbal defense of yourself, in fact, indignation, yes, fear, in fact, longing, yes, zeal, in fact, the metting out of disciplinary punishment. In everything you showed yourselves to be immaculate in the aforementioned matter, they had cleared themselves from the guilt of con they had cleared themselves from the guilt of connivance with the case of incest by disciplining the guilty brother. Therefore, also I wrote to you, not on account of the one who committed the wrong, the incestuous son, nor even on account of the one who was wronged, his father, but that your earnestness, which was on our behalf, might be openly shown among you in the sight of God. On this account we have been encouraged and comforted. And in addition to this encouragement and comfort of ours, we rejoice the more exceedingly at the joy of Titus, because his spirit has been refreshed by all of you. For if, as is the case, I have boasted to him about you, I was not caused any disappointment, but as all things in the sphere of truth we spoke to you, thus also our boasting before Titus turned out to be truth. And his heart is more abundantly toward you while he recalls to himself the obedience of you all, as with fear and trembling you received him. I rejoice that in everything I am of good courage concerning you. Moreover, we make known to you, brethren, the grace of God which has been given among the churches of Macedonia, that in the midst of severe testing which was in the form of afflictions, the test being for the purpose of approving them in their reaction to trials, the superabundance of their joy in their poverty which went down to the depths, superabounded with the result of the plentitude of their liberty, because in this measure of their ability I testify, and beyond their ability, voluntarily, with much, much exhortation, they begged us as a favor that they might participate in the ministry to the saints, and not even as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and to us by the will of God, with the result that we exhorted Titus that, even as he made a beginning on a previous occasion, thus also he would complete in you this grace also. Moreover, even as in everything you superabound,